Hello and welcome back to the Easy Channel, where doing things the easy way doesn't necessarily mean it's the easy way. Today, I want to show you how to send a text message through LabVIEW. I've seen some videos online, but often end up confused. So I want to make a very clear and easily followable video to help anyone interested. Let's get started. I'm going to be using the 2020 base edition of LabVIEW but it should work on the community edition as well. First, let's get a new VI ready. We're gonna be using the SMTP email protocol to send our text message. So first, let's grab all the necessary components. Under data communication, protocols, and finally, SMTP email. And remember, if you're ever unsure about something on the function palette, be sure to turn on context help. First, let's grab the open handle, then the set recipients, followed by set message, Next, send message, and finally, close handle. I then usually get the error feed hooked up. And then I'll attach all the handle feeds. And then let's clean it up a little bit. Now let's just fill in all the nodes. Usually if I'm not going to make a lot of changes, I make the strings constants. But for our example, I'm going to use controls to make it simpler. Oops. As you can see on the set recipients node, there are three strings. The first one is our two, who we're sending the message to. The second one is CC, carbon copy, and the third one is BCC, blind carbon copy. Basically, you can use this to send a message to multiple parties. For example, I'm only going to use one recipient. This is the only one I'm going to use. As you can see on the send node, the suggested timeout is 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds. So I'm going to use that constant. And we're going to make the invalid recipients an indicator. Press Control U to have it cleaned up for you. And now that things are all wired up, we're ready to look at the front panel. Now that we have our components on the front panel, it only becomes a matter of filling it in. First. Let's start with the server address. I'm going to be using my Gmail account to send my messages. So for me, I need to find the Gmail server address. But the concept is the same for most servers. It's as easy as going to Google and typing in Google server info. All we do is copy the outgoing mail SMTP server email address. Followed by a colon. And I forgot to mention, we're going to be using TLS, which stands for Transport Layer Security. This is a cryptographic protocol designed to provide communication security over a computer network. So 
So I'm going to be using 587 and make it true on the block diagram. Next, dial out which email is going to be sending the message. For the username, as you can see in the context help, the username specifies the login for the SMTP server you specify. On most public servers, this is your email address. So we're going to again put the email address. Now for the password. What confused me when I first started learning how to do this was I thought it was asking me about the password for my Gmail account. But that's not the case. What it's asking for is an app password. Well, how do we get that? Go back to Google and click on your account icon. Then go to manage your Google account. Once you're there, Click security. Then scroll down to signing into Google. If you have two step verification, you will see a tab entitled App Passwords. Click on that. You'll be asked to log in again. Once you get to the App Password page, click on Select App, then Custom. I'm going to name mine LabVIEW. Then click Generate. You will then see a yellow box with a password on it. Select and copy that password. We're then going to paste that into the password on the front panel. Next, let's fill out the to portion. As you can see from our control here, it's expecting an array. So let's build one. What we're going to put in this array is twofold. The first part is going to be our number. The next part is going to be a suffix that is our handset address from our mobile provider. In the description, I'll leave the suffixes for the four major mobile carriers. I have Verizon, so mine is at vtext.com. Then we're going to put this in the array and send that to the to node. Now the final part is to make our message and send it. To test this, I'm going to put test in the subject line and this is a test as the message. Let's go ahead and send it. As you can see, I got a notification here from my phone. If we click there, we'll see that I got a text message from my email. The subject is in quotes and the text message is in the middle. When I used my previous email, it didn't have this attachments removed. So I'm still gonna have to figure that out. And there you have it. That is how you send a text message through LabVIEW. Now, you might be wondering, what's so great about this? What can I use this for? Well, if you're interested in how I fully implement this, like and subscribe. It only takes two seconds. But for now, let me show you a quick example. First, I'm going to save this VI. And I'm going to title it Alert Message. Then, I'm going to make a new VI.
In this VI, I'm going to have a while loop. And I'm going to have a case structure. I'm going to have a vertical pointer slide. And I'm going to make a comparison. I'm going to connect the slide to the comparison and make a random constant here. Let's say five. Now, if this is true, we are going to execute the alert message. And there you have it. Let's go to the front panel. So what you can use this for is for monitoring your devices. For me, I'm going to be using it to measure temperature. So as the temperature rises on whatever I'm monitoring, once it gets to a set point, in this case 5, it'll activate our code, our case structure, and it'll send that message telling me, there we are, that the temperature has increased or has reached above our set point. To prevent receiving a million messages as you can see here, I suggest either making an additional conditional or making a wait timer. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.